Hey guys, Scott here. Today I want to talk about Otz's challenge where he did no perks and AFKing for 30 seconds with all killers at high MMR and still won a lot of his games, had over a 3.0 kill rate, which is exceptional uh, for that type of challenge. Now, as soon as you bring up a narrative that is anything but, this game is extremely survivor side and people get very, very upset. And even to Otz, one of the most wholesome people I know, people are shitting on him. They're just lying about him, making stuff up, saying he cheats his MMR like... It's, it's annoying me a little bit, so I felt the need to defend him a bit. And I think a lot of this, even from the people that are not being kind of assholes about it, a lot of people are just not interpreting this video correctly at all. They think he's trying to sell some type of agenda or something like that. I think people are just really not getting the point of this video. So I think the biggest misconception that people have about this video is they think he's saying that, you know, with enough perseverance, if you're good enough, if you play clown, you can beat, you know, very good teams. He's not saying that. No one's saying that. Of course you can. These killers have needed buffs for years and i really hope they get them um that that's not the point of all this the point he's trying to make is that you can bring basically whoever brings the sweatiest stuff is going to win but um in addition to that you can still win your average game even at high mmr it's less hopeless than you'd think uh and that's the main point he's trying to make but let, let me go over the logical progression people that are shitting on Ots for this video sort of take so the first point of contention is that well, we all agree that if you're playing Legion or Clown or Myers, whatever, if you're playing any low tier killer against a very good team, you're just simply not going to win, especially if you have no perks and you AFK for 30 seconds. You're just not winning that. Um, and that's fine. I think we all agree with that point. Um, however, the second point is Ots did very well during this. So he got more than three kills on average, despite having all of this. Therefore, the only possible outcome to this is that he must be low MMR because you can't win against good players with all these handicaps it's just not going to happen and i think there's a lot of logical fallacies that start there so the first part is acknowledging ox's mmr it has to be high it's impossible for it to not be high in fact i checked every game he played for the past two weeks on his stream leading up to doing this challenge and he had an average kill rate of about 3.5 it is physically impossible in a kill based mmr system for him to not have high MMR based on the past two weeks of his games. Also, you can get to the soft cap in literally a day. It's very easy to get there. It's impossible for him to have low MMR. So that counterpoint does not make any sense. It's just verifiably untrue, uh, given that we know how the MMR system works based on kills. So that is not true at all. So how is he still doing so well with all these handicaps at high MMR? Well, here's the next part of the logical fallacy. People are assuming that high MMR means that everyone is just good. Why, why did we suddenly all start believing that MMR is indicative of skill all of a sudden? I, I thought it was a pretty common, you know, sentiment that MMR, it indicates how much you escape. That's, that's it. It's basically as useless as the killer stats for kills that the developers give or behavior gives. Like it, it's, they don't, it doesn't tell the whole picture at all. It doesn't say anything. It just says, did you escape? Did you not escape? That's it. That's the only measurement that we have. And so we know it's not a skill based thing. So that's another like fallacy that people have. They disregard everything that he did because they see he's going against, in, in their eyes, low-skill opponents. And they think, well, he's going against low-skill opponents, so this is meaningless. But if anything, that just confirms that even at high MMR, games are more winnable than you think because there can be an abundance of opponents that are not really the best. And that is indicative of the experience I've had as well. I win far more often than I lose, so I should be at a relatively high MMR. And yet, almost every game, there's at least one weak link. That's the thing. You don't need to have, you know, four shitty players to, like to win the match. You can have three extremely good players and one weak link. This is an understated part of killer. You know how people always say that uh, survivors can negate killer's skill. There's maps like the game. Perfect example. It's just a bunch of god pallets. It doesn't matter how good the killer is. He just they're just god pallets. There's no interaction there. You just drop the pallet and run. Um, killers can do the exact same thing. You can negate the skill of the survivors too. It typically involves finding the weak link, though, which is an incredibly vital tool to have as a killer. You need to be able to identify a weak link because almost every single time you play this game, you're not going to have four perfect survivors. You're going to have one that's a bit not as great as the other. That's the guy you got to go for. And now when you hook that guy in a dead zone, you could have the three best loopers in the entire world. If you've hooked someone in a dead zone, it doesn't matter. You force them into nothing. They could be the best player in the world, but if they have no resources to use, they're still going to die just as much as a rank 20 meg would. And that's one of the most important skills as killer is putting good players into a scenario where their skill doesn't really matter. Now, the thing is, even if you have, let, let's pretend somehow, some way that Ots just got extremely lucky 
and he just got a whole bunch of bad survivors. 26 games in a row. He just somehow always just got bad players. It's statistically so unlikely that it's not even worthy of talking about, but let's pretend that's the case. When you compare it to, I think there's like five other, six people total that have done this challenge now. Um, people will like draw comparisons and say, well, this person got better survivors um, and, you know, they're not getting the weak survivors that Ots is getting, which also makes no sense because they're playing in the same region, the same time. I know Nightlight has done it. Justin's done it. True has done it. Uh, one of Ots' friends, I forget his name. Like, th There's a lot of people that have tried this now. They're all in the same region and play in the same time frame, plus or minus a couple hours. Um, and yet people are still saying, well, Ots just got more bad survivors than everybody else. I guarantee you, you name any streamer who is high MMR, any killer streamer, I guarantee you, you give me five minutes in their VOD, I can point out five survivors that look like a complete potato. Not looking behind them, super basic stuff they're not doing. I guarantee I can do that. 100%. That's how confident I am that I can point out potatoes that everybody goes against. So it's not just that anyone is getting significantly better players than anybody else. Everybody gets potatoes all the time. It's just a negativity bias. You never really pay. Like, you're not going to like remember the Meg who doesn't look behind her and just goes down. You're going to remember the team that shits on you because that experience sucks. And that's a far more memorable experience. That's just what human nature is. So... Like, seriously, I, I challenge anybody to point out someone that, you know, only goes against good players. And I guarantee you, I can point out bad players within five minutes. So I don't think that's a point of contention either. Let, let's boil this down to a very simple bullet point system of logic to make this uh, as clear as possible. So one, you can't beat very good teams with weak killers. Okay. Uh, however, Ots did very well with this challenge using weak killers, no perks, and a lot of handicaps. Ots is high MMR. We can prove this based on his kill rates for the past two weeks. Therefore, high MMR can't be filled with only good players or he could not achieve that win rate. It would be impossible, right? Thus, the average game is still winnable more often than you think. And his whole thing where the game is not super survivor sided sort of has to be true based on this study that he did himself. So it's a very simple line of logic there. And I don't really see the fault in what he's trying to say. It's just people are sort of misinterpreting it and thinking that he's saying you can beat very good teams with bad killers. You can't, but you're just not really going to go against unbeatable teams very often. And it's just, it's significantly rare that you will. Therefore, the average game is still more winnable than people think. That's all I think he's trying to say. Now, there is one counterpoint. And the thing is like, you know, obviously everybody is not odds. Uh, you know, more effort is required to get, you know, to the level of a very good killer and expecting just casual players to get there to be able to match his results is not fair. But it's an interesting thing, though, because what do you usually hear? What's the sentiment among the community? At the high level, super survivor side. But at the lower level, it can be kind of killer side or balanced, right? So wh wh what's like the, what is the bridge that I'm missing there? Because if that's the common sentiment in the community, and I know I've seen that everywhere, then the people that don't want to get to his level and they just want to remain casual, medium, low skill players, that's fine. But isn't that where people say that the game is more killer-sided to begin with? So wh what is the missing piece there that I'm not getting? Because people seem to still be outraged that they can't be as good as Ots. They want to balance the game around high level, but not when they disagree with what they're currently thinking at the time. It's like th there's some missing piece to the logic people are having there that I, I can't figure out. So anyway, th that's just the, the main thing I want to talk about. Um, there's a lot of people just shit talking this because they're misinterpreting it. He's just saying that the average game is more winnable than, than you'd think. That's it. I think that's, he could have simplified that, maybe put that into better words. And I, I don't want to speak for him, but I genuinely think that's what the point of this whole thing was that your average game is more winnable than people think. That's it. Not that you can beat gods with clown. It's just your average game is more winnable than you'd think because MMR is not very good at determining skill. Therefore, even if you're high MMR, you're not always going to get God to your players. And if you think you are, I can prove that you're not. Just show me your games and I will point out potatoes left and right. Um, that is it, though. Um, yeah, I got nothing else. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.